From the 1st of December 2017, pap smears in Australia are going to be replaced by a new cervical screening test or HPV test. In this video, I'll cover a summary of the new changes and include some tips on how your practice can smoothly transition to the new cervical screening program. Probably the most important thing to remember is that Medicare will no longer pay for pap smear tests performed after the 1st of December. So clinicians will need to make sure they perform and request cervical screening test or HPV test. Otherwise patients will be sent a private invoice from the pathology company if a pap smear is mistakenly done or wrongly written on the pathology slip after this date. So what are the key changes? First, the eligible age group to participate in the program is changing to women between 25 years of age and 74 years of age. The old program used to cover women 18 to 69 years of age. So the minimum age has gone up to 25 and the maximum age has also gone up to include older women up to 74 years of age. The frequency of the test will now be every five years instead of the previous two years. Since the new test is more accurate, we're able to perform it less frequently. There's also a new self-collection option, but this is meant for underscreened women over 30 years, and you'll find all the requirements and instructions by visiting cancerscreening.gov.au. The test itself has changed, so as I've mentioned before, clinicians will no longer perform a pap test or pap smear, but instead will be performing an HPV test from a cervical sample. This should be written in the pathology slip as cervical screening test, CST. It's important that all clinicians providing cervical screening are aware of what to write on the pathology slip because words like pap or smear might result in the pathology company mistakenly providing the wrong test and subsequently charging the patient for it. There is a reference table covering what to write on a pathology slip and I'll include the link to it below this video. So those are the main changes at a program level, but what changes will your practice have to make at a practice level? Well, these are largely around your recall and reminder process for the cervical screening initiative. First, you'll need to update the terminology in your recall system. This means changing wording from pap smear, paps, or routine smears to cervical screening or HPV test. In terms of existing recalls from 1st of December, all women between 25 and 69 years of age who were due for a routine pap test will now instead be due for their first cervical screening test. So this means they should be having their first cervical screening test around two years after their previous routine pap smear. Since we have an expanded age group for the older women, we can now invite women 70 to 74 years of age who were not covered by the previous program to have what is being referred to as an exit cervical screening. This will test for the presence of human papillomavirus or HPV types that may lead to cancer. Probably the trickiest change will be delaying invitations for women under 25 years. So if you have any women under 25 years who are becoming due for a routine pap smear in your recall and reminder system, then you will need to up update these recall dates to be changed changed to, well, first, a cervical screening instead, but this test is now due from the time that woman turns 25. This is only for women due for normal routine screening. If you're a hot dog practice, your account manager can help you transition your recall notifications and your online appointment types to reflect the new terminology. We have also created a new cervical screening invitation template for practices using the hot dog recall system. Another couple of practical tips. Make sure all clinicians providing cervical screening services are aware that pap smears will no longer be funded from December 1st. Maybe consider putting up signs in key areas of the consulting room to remind clinicians to only perform the new test and to pay close attention when annotating pathology slips to prevent miscommunication with the pathology labs. Also check that you have sufficient stock of the new cervical screening collection kits and make sure that you talk to your pathology company to find out their preferred kits for sample collection as well as the instructions on how to use that particular brand. You might also consider removing any old pap smear collection kits from your consulting rooms as well. There's free online training created by NPS MedicineWise, which clinicians are highly encouraged to go through to make sure that their cervical screening skills are up to date. And finally, make sure you have access to the new cervical screening guidelines, which are available online, and also that you have appropriate information for your patients. There's fact sheets and posters, which can be ordered from cancerscreening.gov.au. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you'd like to stay up to date with the latest changes, training, and tools for general practice, then make sure you subscribe to the Hot Doc newsletter, which you can access via the Hot Doc blog at hotdoc.com.au. Thanks for watching.